All right, now that we've talked all about division, let's go ahead and practice some just so to kind of refresh your memory. We're doing this in this format where we have our dividend and then we have our divisor on the outside. Now, whenever we start looking at division, uh, we have to start with our divisor and we try to see how many times it will go into each digit in the dividend. So basically, we take it one digit at a time. So we will look at this and say, okay, will 2 multiply by something and get us a 6? And in this case, it will. We can multiply 2 times 3 to get 6. So we write 3, keep it nice and lined up right over the 6. Now we go ahead and we do that multiplication. So two, 3 times 2 would be 6. And then our next step in um, the division problem is we have to subtract those two things. So when we subtract, 6 minus 6 would be 0. And then we drop our next digit and we begin again. So we try to think of what times 2 will give us 2. And in this case, that would be a 1. So we keep it nice and lined up. And then we multiply diagonally. 1 times 2 is 2 and then we subtract going down. So 2 minus 2 is 0. Drop our next digit and begin again. So we think of what do we have to multiply times 2 to get 4. And that would be a 2, keeping that lined up over where we, we are. Multiply diagonally. 2 times 2 would be 4. And then we subtract. Now we have a zero here and there is no other digit to bring down, so we're done at this point. Our quotient is 312. Now you could always check this very quickly by multiplying 312 times 2 because division and multiplication are just backwards of each other. So we could say 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 times 3 is 6. So we end up with that same dividend that we started with. All right, let's try another one here. Let me separate these out. We're going to do the exact same thing. Here we're going to start in with our divisor of 4 and see how many times it will go into each digit. Or you can think of the backwards, which is multiplication. So what times 4 would give us a 5? Well. 1 times 4 will give us a 4, and that's as close as we can get to 5. It's not an exact, but it's as close as we can get. And then we subtract, so 5 minus 4 would be 1. Now we drop our next digit, which is a 3, and we begin again. So what times 4 will give us 13? Well, nothing exactly, but 3 times 4 will give us 12, and that's as close as we can get. Now we subtract, so we'll have a 1, and we drop our next term, our next digit, which is an 8, and we start again. So 4 times 18, or 4 times something gives us 18. Well, that's not going to be an exact thing, but 4 times 4 is 16, and that's as close as we can get. If we did 4 times 5, that would be 20, and that's too much. So now when we subtract, 18 minus 16 is 2. We don't have another digit to be able to bring down, so this is called our remainder, or what we have left over. So our answer here is 134 with a remainder of 2, and this is exactly how we write it. Now, if you wanted to check yourself, when you have a remainder, you have to do it slightly differently. We would have to multiply 134 times 4. So 4 times 4 would be 16. 4 times 3 would be 12, plus 1 is 13. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5 and then we add the remainder. So you multiply and then add. So we would have 8, 3, 5, 538, and this is our check on ourselves.